So I'm going to put my camera in my start position. I'm going to activate some camera effects. I'm going to add some bloom to the scene. And I'm happy with this first location. So what I want to do is I want to create a keyframe for where this camera is located. Now when you choose animation and you create this keyframe, you will set the keyframe for the camera's position, rotation and scale, but also the bloom effect. So I'm going to come to animation. I'm going to move out of, I'm going to show you the camera and I'm going to choose add keyframe. And so now when I've added this keyframe, you can see there's a little yellow dot. The keyframe has been placed in the scene. I'm going to move the camera forward. I'm going to choose add keyframe again. And as I do so, the two keyframes are connected. And this is showing you the path that the camera will travel on as we move forward. So if I move back to my camera view, I want the camera to move forward and end in a position where I can see the dinosaur properly. So instead of clicking add keyframe, I'm going to choose add stop keyframe. And a stop keyframe is a moment where you can choose to create user experience moments. So the camera will travel and it will stop at this location and it will only progress depending on the logic that you choose. And once it's stopped, I'm going to keep the camera moving. So now after it's stopped and we've, we've decided to move on, I want the camera to come up and over and past the dinosaur. And I want it to end about here. So I'm going to add another stop keyframe over here. And the reason I want to do that is you can see we have our hidden manta ray. So this is now a 10 second animation and I'm going to move on with time. And what that means is I can set these stop points to wait for two seconds. So let's go to my camera view and choose play animation. And you see we stop for two seconds and then we continue our animation. And because I don't have it looped, the camera will stop here regardless of whether or not you have chosen to have a stop point or not. But this is all moving a bit quickly for me, so I want to change it to a 20 second animation. And you can see now the camera slows down and you can hide these animation lines in the keyframes as you travel. Now the thing is I want after the camera has moved past our Tyrannosaur, I want us to reveal our manta ray. And the way I want to do that is with a light. I want the light to turn on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select another light and I'm going to choose spotlight. All right, so I've created some fairly dynamic lighting on my manta ray, but of course now the effect is somewhat ruined because I can already see my manta ray and that's detracting from this original experience of the Tyrannosaur that I'm creating. So what I want to do is I want to animate the lights. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the intensity to zero. And so now you can see the light is off. I'm coming to my animation tab and I'm going to choose add keyframe and this creates a keyframe in location and it also creates a keyframe for all of the light parameters. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my animation and I'm going to choose add stop keyframe. And so what I've done here is I've created two keyframes in the same position so this light doesn't move but I've also keyframed both the color intensity and range of this light. And now the last thing I want to do is I want to turn the intensity back to two and now I want to create a new keyframe. And so now in here we have three keyframes all at the same location. But what we want to do is we want to make it time or click. So we select time or click and we have a two second animation but we want the duration of wait to be about 20 seconds. Now the reason we've done that, the reason we've chosen that number, the 20 seconds, is that our camera animates for 10 seconds to get to its original stop point. 
So our camera will come along here and within 10 seconds it gets to this point here. And then it's going to wait for a set number of seconds. And we've said 10 seconds. And so that means that 20 seconds will go past. And after that 20 seconds, this light will have been timed to turn on. So let's see that in action. Now, one of the things to realize is that if I just press play animation, that will play the animation of the object I've selected. So currently I have the camera selected, but I want to play everything because it's the whole scenes animation that I want to look at. And so as we're traveling, you can see right now that only that red light is on and the blue light is currently not on. We wait for the 10 seconds. And then after we wait, once we start moving, this blue light will turn on. And there you go, the light turned on. And so now we have a bit of a choreograph happening in the scene. And the next thing to do is make the red light animate in the same way. Now, if you make a mistake in your keyframing, you've chosen perhaps the wrong intensity, it can be very difficult if you haven't moved the light to select the keyframe you want because all of the keyframes exist on one little location. So the trick here is to select your light, come to your animation and choose edit keyframes. And in doing so, it will send you to keyframe number one. And if I choose these arrows, you'll see it takes me to progressive keyframes. And this will allow you to edit the values of those keyframes. So when you're ready to change those keyframes, you choose edit keyframe. And now you're ready to change the value. So I'm quite happy with where we've ended up. I think there's a bit of dynamic lighting going on. I think there's a bit of a moment that happens when we reveal our manta ray. So this is, this is a pretty cool scene and I'm pretty happy with it. But here's an important thing to realize. When you design systems for real-time technology, and that's what Vortals is based on, it's based on game technology. This is very different to rendering something with Blender. The things you have to think about are really different. So I have got my quality settings up to 100%, as good as I can possibly get it. So let me take that and reduce it by one setting. And now you can see the entire scene looks completely different. And the reason for that is that game technology limits the number of lights that get rendered correctly. When you reduce the quality of the scene, each step of quality reduction reduces the light count that's getting rendered correctly. So right now, we're at the lowest level. This is what a mobile device will see. And you can see it's a very poor comparison to what we had. And if I come up in quality, you'll notice now suddenly there's a bit of a proper spotlight effect. So originally, no spotlight effect, just general lighting. As we increase the quality, you can see a spotlight effect. But you'll notice that no shadow is being cast. And as I increase the quality, now suddenly a shadow is being cast. And all of this is being done to reduce the amount of calculations this game system has to do. And so in this scene, I've got lots and lots of lights. And every light that I'm adding to the scene is creating more and more calculations that have to be done. And if you're trying to serve 30 or 60 frames a second, this becomes a huge problem for the system. And so it finds really tricky ways of reducing how it's doing its calculations. And you can see that as I increase our quality, now we're getting shadows. But here's the thing. The program is choosing dynamically which lights to make shadow. And right now we've got a shadow on this light. This down light that's lighting our little plaque is creating shadows and that is such an unimportant light. So now we need to think about whether or not we actually care about this light. And the way the system works out which light to choose is based on the intensity. So let's reduce the intensity. And by reducing the intensity to 0.2, suddenly the system prioritizes another light. So this light here has now been prioritized and now we get 
shadowing from the Tyrannosaur. And that's a much better result. In fact, I don't even know if I want this, this light to do what it's doing. This might be a better way of achieving lighting on this. So let me delete this light and let me move our little ambient lights just a bit. And so now by using a different lighting setup, we get almost the same result, but we've saved ourselves some problems. And now you can see all of this red is about, and that is because the intensity of this light is at three, and that's just a little bonkers for the scene. So let's reduce that, and suddenly the scene doesn't look as bad. But remember that we have animated this sequence. And so you will still get this intensity of three in the animation. So the way to fix that is to come to our keyframes, we edit our keyframes, we go to the one that had this really high intensity, and we reduce it down.